The results are in. We have a new president, president-elect Donald J. Trump. I'm Rob Satloff, the executive director of the Washington Institute. And in the next couple of minutes, I want to offer a brief look at what we might be able to expect in the early days of a Trump administration, and certainly the weeks that lead up to that in terms of the transition from candidate Trump to President Trump. Now, throughout the campaign, candidate Trump has outlined four basic themes in terms of his policies toward the Middle East. First, let's destroy ISIS. Second, we need to get tough on Iran. Third, we need to strengthen our old alliance with Israel, with Egypt. And then fourth, we need to make some of our traditional partners in the region, like Saudi Arabia, pay up for the help we give them to secure their country. Now, disentangling these four policies, in practical sense, is not very easy. It requires answering some basic questions. Are the Russians part of the problem or part of the solution? Namely, are they part of the problem in terms of aggravating the wars in Syria and the flow of refugees? Or are they part of the solution in the fight against ISIS? Iran, part of the problem, part of the solution. They play a role in Syria against ISIS, but of course, their tentacles are throughout the region in terms of undermining our partners and spreading their violent ideology. We have to have basic answers to these questions. And I think the Trump team will have to sort through who are really partners and who are really adversaries. Even when you come to some of the allies that a President Trump wants to help, there are other questions in terms of what we're going to be willing to put on the table to reflect that commitment to support. Take Egypt, for example. President uh, Trump is likely to make um, the partnership with President Sisi a featured element of his Middle East policy. But beyond linguistics, beyond rhetoric, what will President Trump be willing to put on the table to reflect that partnership, especially when Egypt's most serious challenge is economic? And we know that President Trump is not going to want to send American dollars abroad just for the sake of helping out an ally. Even in terms of Israel, I think it's fair to say that we're going to see diminished American efforts to promote traditional diplomacy, a traditional critique of Israeli settlement activities, or the need for resuming some peace process with the Palestinians. But from Israel's perspective, there's more to the U.S. partnership than just the peace process. Israel relies upon America's role in the region as a key element of its deterrence. It's not just the bilateral U.S.-Israel relationship. Israel operates under the broader American umbrella of American efforts throughout the region to build alliances, build security, and build stability. Will the Israelis be able to count on that in a Trump administration? Answers to some of these dilemmas will be found in who a president-elect Trump chooses for senior advisors and senior appointments. Realism and internationalism are not opposites. And he can find men and women of distinction and experience who both reflect his narrowing of priorities, but understand the vital role that America plays in filling vacuums and preventing bad actors from taking advantage of that emptiness to fill it with bad behavior, bad ideology, and threatening efforts against America's allies and interests in the region. So as we look at the next several months, watch appointments, watch what sort of outreach a president-elect Trump makes toward our allies in the region, and watch what some of the actors in the region themselves do, the Russians, the Syrians, the Iranians, to try to set the terms for a President Trump already by time he takes the oath of office in January of 2017.